Hi there, my name is Rob. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about how healthy eating corrects health problems. There's a lot of information out there uh, about, you know, about a lot of different topics, but information about your health is the single most important type of information that there is out there. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, there's, you know, there's so much stuff you can have. You can have lots of money and finances. You know, there's a lot of videos about all these things, but having good health, I've had a lot of health problems, so having good health is really the most important uh, thing that you can have. Uh, so videos about that and information about that is the most type, important type of information that's out there. Okay, so the reason that health is the most important type of knowledge uh, in, in this world is because um, the human body is the only thing you have when you come into this world. And when it's functioning properly, you have everything. And when it's not functioning properly, you have nothing. You can have all the fancy stuff, all the money, all the fancy gizmos and gadgets. Um, but without your health, you really have nothing. Um, I know what it's like to be sickly, so anything you can, to can do to avoid being sick, you should definitely do. So the purpose of this video is to explain how healthy eating and lifestyle factors uh, cure health problems. In other words, how does this occur? What is the relationship between your diet and your health? I'm glad you asked that. Good question. Um, I'm going to explain that right now. Okay, the human body has an internal healing mechanism and your body is always to trying to return to what is called homeostasis. Homeostasis means that your body is working in its most optimal condition. Uh, the, this internal healing me mechanism can be seen when you cut your finger or you sprain your wrist or you break a bone. Uh, without doing anything on its own, um, the, the broken bone or the cut finger or the sprained ankle will actually slowly heal. It will slowly, slowly uh, go back to normal. The same thing happens when you catch a cold or, or when you get the flu or cough or cold. Um, without doing anything on your part, even without taking any medicine, uh, the, slowly, the, the, the healing mechanism of your body will slowly cure it. Uh, if you didn't do that, uh, you would catch a cold and you'd stay with a cold forever. The reason you, you don't catch a cold for the rest of your life is because your, you, the human body has this internal healing mechanism and it slowly, cure, slowly and surely cures the problem. So now I'm going to explain how healthy eating plays into this. So let's say you cut your finger or you break a bone. Uh, without doing anything on your part, uh, the, the cut finger or the broken bone will actually slowly and surely heal itself. Um, so in other words, as long as you don't keep cutting your finger or breaking your, you know, bashing your arm into the concrete, your finger or slow, your finger or your bone will slowly start to heal itself. Uh, now you can put a cast on your uh, arm or you can put a bandage on your finger, but it's not the cast or the bandage that's doing the healing. It's your internal uh, body, your body's internal healing mechanism that actually does the work and, and actually heals your, your arm or your finger. Um, so the, when you put a cast on your arm, it's just, uh, the cast is just there to push the bones together. Same with the bandage. It, it doesn't uh, serve any function other than a superficial function. Uh, it's your body that's actually doing the healing. So it's your body, not the cast or the bandage. So just as broken bones and cut fingers have causes, so does disease and illness. The main cause of illness and disease is diet and lifestyle factors. So improper nutrition and diet is the main cause uh, of disease along with other uh, lifestyle factors such as lack of sleep, lack of exercise, and a big important one is lack of sunshine. Um, so the way that changing your, your diet and lifestyle cures disease is the same way that stopping uh, bashing your arm into the concrete or cutting your finger uh, allows your body to slowly heal your cut finger or your, uh, your broken arm. Uh, the same the same thing is true of removing the, the cause of the disease. So, um, uh, stopping the cause of your illness or disease will slowly allow your your uh, body to heal it. Okay, so what is the cause of disease? Uh, in short, it's diet and lifestyle factors. So your diet and your lifestyle uh, are the main causes of disease. And by removing the causes, you can allow your internal healing mechanism to slowly do its job, uh, and and surely slowly and surely get rid of the disease. Uh, this works the same way as a broken arm or a cut finger uh, slowly heals itself. Okay, uh, so there's a lot of there's actually a lot of proof of this. So there are a lot of scientists and doctors who have uh, proven or at least shown a causal link between diet and lifestyle factors and uh, health outcomes. Uh, one of the most famous is Dr. Weston Price. So Dr. Weston Price traveled around the world uh, with his wife. Um, he was a he was a dentist and he had traveled all around the world. He noticed that indigenous people that live naturally. Uh, had very few health problems and had very uh, few cavities and dental decay, despite never having used a toothbrush or even a toothpaste. 
Um, he came to the conclusion that um, the reason for this is they didn't have all the commercialized and industrialized uh, foods that are commonly seen in large cities uh, with uh, quote unquote civilized people in, in large cities. Um, their food was not processed in a way in, in any way and it was more closer to the way it, it is in nature. And so because of this, they had fewer health problems and, and dental cavities. Okay, another person who had actually um, proved this was Dr. Francis Pottinger. Francis Pottinger put three groups of cats uh, on three separate diets. And the group of cats that was on the healthiest diets live um, very, very much disease freely, free and without any health problems. The other two groups of cats were put on a more inferior diet and had um, all the diseases that are commonly seen in humans. Okay, another one uh, was actually Robert McHarrison. So Robert McHarrison showed with both rats and monkeys uh, that when both of these animals are placed on a superior diet, they have virtually no uh, health problems. Uh, when both of these animals are placed on a more inferior diet, they come down with all the same uh, diseases and illnesses that humans typically get. Um, I will talk more about Francis Pottinger and Robert McHarrison in a future video about raw food. The first step in adopting a healthy diet is to cut out processed foods. Uh, the two foods that are most processed are white sugar and white flour. These are the two foods that are responsible for the majority of, majority of health problems that most people suffer from. So why are these foods dangerous? Uh, the reason these foods are dangerous is because they have been altered substantially from their natural form. And so because of this are diffi difficult for your body to process. Okay, the two main processed foods are uh, in North America uh, and even around the world are, that people eat are white sugar and white fl uh, flour uh, followed by white rice. Uh, white sugar has had all the nutrition stripped from it and it uses up vitamins and minerals that are already in your body in order to process it. Uh, so it is a completely artificial product that's been bleached and had all kinds of chemicals applied to it. Uh, so it's had all the nutrition stripped from it. Um, a lot of people avoid sugar just because they want to lose weight or they want to slim down. But in reality, being fat is one of the at least of the problems that you will get from white sugar. Um, white sugar is implicated in a whole host of problems, everything from diabetes to allergies and eczema and every other disease out there. So. Uh, if you want, it's great that you want to slim down, but cutting out white sugar uh, will help you with virtually every disease, disease you can possibly think of. So this is also true of white flour. So white flour has been processed and bleached in a similar manner. And so cutting it out will definitely improve your health outcomes. Um, another food to cut out is white rice. So eating a large portion of your, your diet in, in the form of white rice, as such as done in India or China, um, has been shown to cause vitamin B1 deficiencies and is the reason people used to get, get the disease very, very in Indonesia and other tropical parts of the world. Uh, white rice has had the husk of the rice removed and this is where the vitamin B1 is. Uh, so instead of eating white rice, just switch to brown rice. Okay, so the next, thing to, the next thing to cut out are table salt, alcohol, caffeine and cigarettes and or marijuana. All of these things are injurious to, to your health and you should cut them out completely or as much as you can. Uh, salt interferes with your dig digestion and it can also cause insomnia. Caffe caffeine stimulates your adrenal glands and um, is just, just generally hard on your body. Uh, alcohol is self-explanatory self as most people know that alcohol is bad for you, but I'm gonna explain the logic behind this. So think of what act alcohol actually is. Alcohol is actually the product of something going bad. Um, it's created when something like grapes or apples uh, uh, go ferments and goes bad. Fermentation is just a fancy word for going bad. So when something like grapes or apples decomposes and breaks down, it turns into alcohol. Uh, so when you drink alcohol, you're essentially consuming something that has gone bad. Uh, this is the equivalent of eating an apple or an orange uh, that is mo when it's moldy or rotted out or any other food that has gone bad. Uh, and this is the reason alcohol is bad for you. So think about smoking. Smoking is literally lighting something on fire and inhaling the fumes. So how can that be good for you, right? So this is the type of logic you need to use when it comes to your health. Okay, so another a big one is salt. Uh, salt is really bad for you and you should stop using salt in your food completely. If you, uh, if you need to have salt in your food, you should try to use sea salt for the time being, but eventually you should even wean yourself off sea salt as well. Um, salt in general interferes with digestion and causes insomnia and results in other negative health consequences. Um, your body needs both sodium and iodine and you can get these two nutrients from food. So green leafy vegetables, celery, tomatoes, uh, in, in general, all have uh, sodium in them, and you can get that nutrient from those things. Um, same with iodine, it's fine in pineapples, uh, bananas, strawberries, and other foods as well. So these are literally the first steps to take when it comes to reversing disease. 
Uh, you should cut out all processed foods such as white sugar, white flour, white rice, uh, also alcohol, caffeine, table salt, and smoking as well. Um, even doing this is really difficult for most people as we, we have become accustomed to believing that these things are normal. Uh, but keep in mind that animals in the wild uh, do not do these things. Um, and they don't have all the health problems that we have. Um, we're the only ones who are getting sick with such a high frequency. Uh, animals in the wild rarely get sick or have health problems. And, and this is the reason um, that they rarely get sick because they live more naturally than we do. Okay, so these are the first steps to reversing disease. And just by doing these, you'll be able to reverse a lot of health issues. Um, the reason this works is because the things you are removing, eliminating from your diet are the cause of the problem itself. Uh, and removing them allows your body to use its internal mechanism uh, to fix the problem the same way that uh, removing the cause of the broken arm or the cut finger uh, allows your internal healing mechanism to fix the problem. Um, so health problems are the same way. It uses your body's internal mechani healing mechanism to, to fix itself, to heal itself. Okay, so there are some other lifestyle f factors that affect your health as well, and there are other aspects of your diet that affect your health outcomes as well. Um, the amount of sleep you get, the amount of exercise you get, uh, the amount, the, how much sunlight you get are all lifestyle factors that affect your health and are just as important as your diet uh, when it comes to your health. Okay, so one of the things that affects you, your health is sleep. So sleep is very self-explanatory. -explanat uh, when you sleep, your body fixes and repairs your, your body. Uh, you, need to, you need to get a full night's sleep in order for that to happen. Uh, you should go to bed as early as you can uh, if you have to get up early in the morning to make sure you have enough sleep. Ideally, you should be in bed before midnight because our bodies are set to be asleep when it's dark and awake when it's uh, during daylight hours. And this is uh, when your do body does most of its work uh, at night, in the dark when you're asleep. Okay, so the other one is exercise. So exercising moderately a few times a, a week is good for your immune system and your lymph system, which is responsible for flushing waste out of your body. Uh, I recommend finding a fun hobby to do, such as uh, riding a bike or going skiing. Uh, that way you're doing something enjoyable instead of going to the gym and doing tedious exercises. Uh, that way you'll, you'll make sure that you keep doing it and um, that way you keep getting the benefits of exercise when it comes to your health. Okay, the other one that most people are not familiar with is sunlight. Uh, contrary to popular, popular belief and what you may have been told, sunlight is actually good for you and is essential for good health. Uh, sunlight gives you vitamin D and you need this vitamin uh, for optimal health. Um, the amount, of, uh, sun, the amount of vitamin D that you get in food is actually insufficient. So just 20 minutes in the sun gives you thousands of IUs, international units of vitamin D. Whereas in order to get just a few hundred, you'd have to eat an entire turkey. So the difference between getting your vitamin, vitamin D from food and from sunlight is like night and day. Uh, prior to the Industrial Revolution, people would spend the entire day outdoors on the farm, uh, working from sunup to sundown. When the Industrial Revolution came around, people now started to spend their entire day indoors in factories for 60 hours a week, whereas before they were spending 60 hours uh, of that same week working on their farm outdoors. So because of this, people would get, would get diseases such as rickets and a lot of diseases which were known at the time but not, were not very uh, common, were now becoming more common due to this change from uh, working and being outdoors all day uh, to now being, to working, being indoors all day. Uh, so a lot of those diseases uh, that became common during this period are now very common still today and are with us to this day. So getting enough sunlight is especially important if you live in a cold climate where it is very difficult to get enough sunlight all year round. A human evolution has taken a place in a predominantly warm tropical climate and so our bodies are used to getting sunlight on a daily basis year round. But in the last tens of thousands of years, uh, humans have been living in a, in a cold climate and so those of us who live in a cold climate need to make a special effort to get enough sunshine. If you live in the U.S. or Canada, chances are you have a vitamin D deficiency as most of the U.S. is not tropical and all of Canada isn't either. Uh, so getting enough sunshine is especially important. Um, if you live in a tropical climate, most likely you get enough sunshine just going about your daily routine as long as you're not spending the whole day, uh, you know, morning to evening indoors. Um, as well, I want to stress that if you live in a cold climate, you, if you can possibly do it, you should go on vacation in the wintertime uh, to a warm tropical climate. Uh, so instead of using your vacation time from work in the summertime to go to Europe or across the United States or Canada, uh, just go to a warm tropical climate for as, much, for as long as you possibly can. Uh, remember, human beings have evolved in a warm tropical climate and we are evolved to be in the sun all year round. Uh, so staying in a cold climate during the winter time will result in a vitamin D deficiency. 
uh, which can result in all kinds of negative health outcomes. So it's important to go, go to a warm climate for at least some time in the winter, if at all possible. So the next one I want to talk about is fried foods. So foods cooked in oil have shown to be carcinogenic and are the worst of the cooked foods, meaning that frying in oil is the worst way to cook food. Uh, oil heated in the presence of oxygen creates all kinds of carcinogenic compounds and animals who, who are fed these fried foods actually get sick and die. They've actually done experiments on rats and dogs and have, that have shown that when these animals eat fried food, uh, food fried in oil, they get sick and have health problems and eventually die. Okay, so the last thing I wanna talk about is raw versus cooked food. So if you're new to healthy eating, it is good to start with just the dietary tips I gave earlier, such as avoiding processed foods, such as white sugar and white flour, uh, things like alcohol, caffeine, table salt. Just doing these things is difficult for most people, so this is where you should start. Um, but for those, for those of you who have already done those things and have already seen results in terms of reducing health problems and want to increase their health even further, this is a good topic for you. Uh, so there are numerous scientific experiments that have, been, that have been done in the past that show that when animals are placed on a raw food diet, they do really well. And when they are fed the same diet cooked, they succumb to all kinds of health problems. The most famous of these is Dr. Francis Pottinger. So uh, Francis Pottinger is the guy I talked about earlier. He placed three groups of cats on three different diets and, with, and they had three different health uh, outcomes based on the diets that they were placed on. So all three sets of ha cats had at least one third raw meat uh, as part of their diet, but one group had the other two thirds as raw milk. The second group had the other uh, two thirds of their diet as pasteurized milk and the third group had the other two thirds as cooked meat. Uh, the cats who ate completely raw food had virtually no health problems whatsoever, uh, but the two sets of cats that had uh, a two thirds pasteurized milk and cooked meat came down with all the health problems that are commonly seen in humans. We're talking every disease you would find in a medical textbook, everything from greater incidence of bacterial and viral infections, infections to gingivitis and other dental abnormalities such as bleeding gums. So most of the cats fed cooked meat were very irritable and would occasionally bite their keepers. Um, intestinal parasites and vermin were very common. Skin lesions and allergies were common. Uh, many died from diarrhea followed by pneumonia. Uh, no cat survived the sixth month of life in the third generation of the cooked food cats. Uh, among the disease conditions that were found upon autopsy were hepatitis, paralysis, meningitis, arthritis, rickets, enlarged colon, bronchitis, and enlarged bladders. Uh, the list of disease goes on and on. Uh, there are many other scientists who have done similar experiments but, uh, such as these, but another one worth mentioning that I mentioned earlier was Robert McCarrison. So Robert McCarrison uh, did a similar experiment on both rats and monkeys. He fed one group of rats a completely raw food diet and the second group a cooked food diet. So the raw food rats live very healthy and productive lives with virtually no signs of disease. Uh, all 2,000 cooked food rats came down with all kinds of health problems such as tuberculosis, arthritis, ulcers, inflammation of the eyes, anemia, loss of hair, infected teeth, uh, infected tonsils, um, middle ear disease, corneal ulcerations, uh, and skin diseases of various types. Uh, in, in addition, the rats seem to, vary, to be affected mentally. Uh, so in contrast to the raw food rats, which were very gentle and affectionate, uh, the cooked food rats became ill-tempered and vicious. Uh, they would bite their attendant, kill each other, uh, and generally display the con a state of continuous nervous irritability. Um, the same guy, Robert McCarrison, did the same experiment on monkeys, and the results were the same. Uh, the, monkeys fed, the, the monkeys that were fed raw food diet stayed healthy, but the cooked food monkeys came down with all kinds of health problems. So diseases were very common and every monkey died early. The postmortems of these monkeys indicated the presence of dozens of physical abnormalities and ailments. These included uh, uh, dilation of the stomach, stomach ulcers, degeneration of the mucous membranes, ballooning of the small bowels, atrophy and thinning of the walls of the small intestine, uh, colitis, ballooning of the colon, and a whole bunch of other ones. Okay, so start with the first part, which is taking all white sugar, white flour, white rice, even alcohol, caffeine, tobacco, and as much salt as is humanly possible out of your diet. Uh, once you can do that successfully, uh, you can, and you can live like this for a while, you will notice that you'll get huge results in terms of your health outcomes. Uh, you'll notice that you get sick less, and many things like seasonal allergies, eczema, uh, coughs and colds, uh, flus, everything, all these things will all reduce. Some of these things may go away completely, or at least reduce in severity. Okay, so once you get past this stage, the next step is to get rid of fried foods from your diet and try to get as much sunlight as you can. So if it's summertime, you don't want to burn, but you, you, want to, you don't want to avoid the sun completely, that's for sure. Uh, if you're worried about burning, don't put sunscreen on. Instead, uh, cover up with clothing, go in the shade, 
uh, or go swimming in the water. Uh, once you get out, the, the sun has to burn off the water before it can start burning your skin. So once it does, uh, go back in the water again. Um, don't spend too much time before you go in again. So if you have darker skin, you don't have to worry too much about burning. So you can definitely spend much longer in the sun. And the longer you do stay in the sun, the more vitamin D your, your skin makes. Uh, and the darker your skin is, the longer you need to stay in the sun in order to actually uh, get enough, to make enough vitamin D compared to a fair skin person. Okay, so if it's not summertime, you really don't have to worry about getting burned uh, unless you're skiing on a sunny day or in the spring. Uh, this, you know, something like that. Uh, the sun in seasons other than uh, summer in colder climates, such as is found in Canada or the northern US, it's not strong enough in the spring and fall to actually give you a sunburn. Um, so the final stage now in achieving optimal health is to slowly transition to eating more of your diet in the form of raw, uh, uncooked foods rather than cooked foods. So slowly increase the ratio of raw food as opposed to cooked food in every meal. Um, personally, I eat about 80 to 90% of my food raw and maybe one day I'll transition to 100%. Uh, so far, I haven't been able to, uh, to but everything comes in small steps. Um, so far, this seems to be working for me and obviously the more raw food than cooked food, the better. So once you've cut out all these things from your diet and are eating 100% raw food and getting lots of sunshine every day and getting lots of sleep and exercise, you're pretty much living the way that animals do in nature and you will have similar health outcomes as what they get which is to say that you'll suffer very little from any kind of d disease or illness and you won't have all the diseases that are commonly find in, that are commonly found in most people uh, anyway these are the steps to good health and i wanted to say one last thing uh, before i end this video uh, what i want to say that this process that i've outlined in this video is the only real way to good health uh, meaning that the reason disease exists at all is due to not living uh, according to nature uh, by doing the steps I've talked about in this video, you are essentially removing the cause of the majority of the diseases known to man. And this is really the only r real way to good health. So what I'm trying to say is that there's only so much a doctor can do if you're not living a healthy lifestyle. So take a headache, for instance. If you get a headache and you go to the doctor and he prescribes an aspirin, the headache may go away momentarily. Uh, but this is not a cure. This is just a removal of a symptom. The cause of the headache has not been removed. And so one, removed, and so once the drug wears off, the headache comes back again. I mean, it's not because of a lack of aspirin in your body that you get a headache in the first place. And what about future headaches? Are you supposed to keep taking aspirin all your life just to mask the symptoms? The only true cure is to remove the cause of the headache in the first place. The, this is true, really true of any drug. Drugs don't really cure you. They mask the symptoms momentarily so that you don't feel the symptom. And once the drug wears off, the symptoms reappear. The only lasting cure is to remove the cause of the disease and allow your body's internal healing mechanism to remove the disease. So in the long run, it's really only the human body that can cure you, uh, that can cure disease, uh, not really any drug. So there's an ancient Ayurvedic proverb that goes, when diet is wrong, medicine is of no, of no use. When diet is correct, medicine is of no need. And I totally agree with this. Without fixing your diet and lifestyle choices, you will always have health problems uh, and hence always need medicine. And medicine is just a short-term fix. Uh, for lasting cures, you have to change your lifestyle. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm, I will be making more videos like this in the future on a lot of other topics related to health, such as sunshine, raw food, and other topics. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bye for now. Okay, so if you like this video, uh, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, uh, please subscribe to the video and hit the notification bell so you don't uh, miss any of my future videos.